Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to tonight's middle of the night or early morning bonus upload, depending on wherever you may live. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you all know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go and folks, they do matter. Now everyone, I've taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this middle of the night slash early morning bonus upload, shall we? Today's first experience. I'm 17 years old, and I know what you're thinking. Just a kid's imagination. Just let me tell you my experience, and you can decide if you want to believe it or not. It was mid to late December 2020 in Central PA. I honestly didn't know we had anything like this out here. I was at my family's hunting cabin in Pennsylvania doing what most Pennsylvanians do in December. I was going to be there for two weeks with my dad, brother, and granddad. We had arrived the first day at 4.45, so we still had some hunting light left. We grabbed our rifles and headed out. We got some light snow in the morning so we could see tracks easier, but enough to get stuck or get lost. We walked for roughly five minutes when we finally came across some tracks. There were two sets and some scat. We could tell by the size of the scat one was a buck. My brother and dad went after one set of tracks and me the other. I followed the tracks, always, till the brush was getting too thick for me to see past. I decided to sit up against a tree with my rifle for about 15 minutes, eating a snack bar and drinking some water. When it sounded like I went deaf, no noise, the whole woods sounded quiet. Then I heard a loud crunch and pop of sticks and leaves. Sounded way too heavy to be a deer, but couldn't have been a bear since we didn't see many in the winter. Then I smelled this awful smell of meat. It smelled as if it had sat in the sun for two weeks. Five minutes later, everything was still very quiet when I suddenly got the feeling of being watched. Now I don't get scared easily, but I got up, packed all my stuff grabbed my gun and walked slowly, looking behind me every few yards. When I finally got back to camp, it was roughly 5.54, dark. I saw my brother, dad, and granddad sitting around the campfire eating hot dogs and beans. I pulled up a chair and grabbed a hot dog and started to eat. When my dad asked, did you see anything? I sat and thought for a minute and said no, just some snow and birds thinking it was a good idea to hide what I had smelled and heard. Later that night, when I laid down, I thought about it some more and texted a family friend. He's 49, maybe 50, and one of the smartest outdoorsmen I know. I texted him, hey, I had a weird experience in the woods today. He texted back, what happened, son? I said this terrible smell like I had never smelled before, and these really big footsteps way bigger than a deer. He said, smell? What kind of smell? I said, like someone left meat out in the sun for days. He texted, oh, I was worried you were going to say that. Let me tell you a story. So I was 27 in 1999, and I was hunting deep in the backwoods. I was sitting there for some time when this smell overcame me. This smelled like rotting flesh, and everything went silent. I couldn't see anything. But about 15 minutes later, I heard someone say my name or come here. The only part 
was it was my mom's voice, clear as day. The thing is, she had died two years before. I ran and never looked back, and never hunted there again. I dropped my phone from pure shock, pulled my blankets up, and went to bed. I didn't want to move. I had a terrible nightmare of a deer that wasn't a deer chasing me, and I fell. And right before it attacked me, I woke up sweating and screaming. The second day, we went out for our second day of hunting. I walked to the tree stand we had put up in the summer. I got in it for about an hour or so. Later, everything went silent, and I heard walking again, and the smell was back. The only difference this time is I could see it. Raggedy skin, almost like it didn't fit, no tail. Skin on its face was drooping way past it should have been. I put my gun up, shaking like I had never done before, looked down the scope and shot at it twice. It ran so fast into the brush while screaming and crying like crazy. Five minutes later, my dad radioed me, asking if I got one. I said, well, I shot something that looked like a deer. I don't know what it was. Please just get here. As I dropped the radio to the ground, my brother, dad, and grandfather all came with their guns. Fifteen minutes later, I'm still in the tree stand shaking. They had to help me down from the stand. They asked me what I had shot. I said, I think it was a doe. It was different. I told them what it was. They didn't believe me, of course. Which, I don't blame them. It's crazy to think. I barely believed it myself. And then the scariest part happened. We all heard our mom's voices say our name and say, where are you? Yeah, that's right. We all heard our own moms say the same thing. My grandfather heard his mom. My dad heard his mom. My brother and I heard ours. We all looked at each other and got out of there. Then we heard a baby crying and we felt bad, but we knew it wasn't real. We got to the cabin and while we were packing, we heard a thud. I opened the door with a rifle in hand and saw two dead rabbits on the porch with their stomachs ripped out. We got out of there, ran to the truck, rifle still in hand. We got in and drove as fast as we could, and it was the longest ride ever. We sold the property since none of us wanted to go back. The new owners have had it for roughly a year, and they're starting to have problems. Today's second encounter. The other day, my wife and I were taking a lovely afternoon stroll through the woods, talking about everything and anything. Whatever came to our minds, we were pretty much just shooting the crap when all of a sudden, the pleasant revere of bird songs that filled the air came to a halting stop. The gentle rustling of tree leaves was no more. There was nothing but dead silence. The temperature seemed to drop 20 degrees, a terrible chill through shot, shot through my spine. We stopped dead in our tracks, and I knew it in my gut that we both could feel what the other was feeling. Honey, something's not right. My wife squeezed my hand. Yeah, you feel that? I showed her the goosebumps on my arm. She clenched her teeth as she began to shiver. A child's voice shouted out her name. She fumbled through her purse for something. A few seconds later, the voice shouted out my name. Pepper spray ready, she whispered. This is my general direction. As softly as a feather's caress. Ahead of us, we began to hear some rustling in the foliage. I don't remember any of us moving. We just stood there like statues. Then, more dead silence, the rustling started up again and continued a bit longer. Then it got closer, still closer. Then the crack of a tree branch or twig on the ground, and silence. I couldn't even look behind me to check if we were going to be ambushed by a bunch of bored teenagers. My gaze was glued to the spot where the branch just cracked. A low, unearthly growl, I could smell something rotten, my brows were furrowed in a critical stage of fight or flight. Wait, I thought someone just 
She had the pepper spray pointed at the growl that had just came. Low, snorous, garbled croak. An unfamiliar bipedal creature ambled out from the trees. It started fumbling towards us with this half-murderous look and half-limping in pain, or it seemed. I could make out a lot of details, long, slender claws on both hands, and legs reminiscent of a minotaur. My wife ended up dropping the pepper spray, and we ran as fast as we could to our car, and we have not been back to that spot since. Today's third encounter. I'm somewhat ashamed to admit so, but before my encounter, I wouldn't have believed if someone had told me they had seen something. It was in 2012. I had gone to the Banff Forest elk hunting. The area in which I hunt is only 30 miles or so from my own home, so whenever I am there, it is always a day trip, and as such, I travel light. In other words, no tent and very little in regards to supplies, just enough for a day and perhaps a little extra for an emergency. In 2012, I was 59, and although I am in reasonably good shape, I was in no way looking to hike a long way or in much elevation for the day. This was fairly much going to be a walk in the woods, and if I happened to run across something, it would have been a bonus. In other words, I was hunting, but not so much, if that makes any sense. It was a pristine day with blue skies, with very wispy cloud cover floating over Banff. And, had I entered the forest at 8 a.m., with my rifle slung over my shoulder and a light pack on my back, it was so warm that morning that about a mile in, I had taken off my jacket and was wearing it. Heavy woolen pullover. It was about 11.30 that I found a nice area to sit for an hour. And it was here that I would make my stand as far as seeing something to shoot was concerned. There was about a foot of snow in the woods and within about 20 minutes the wind kicked up as the gray cloud cover began to roll over me and light snow began to fall. I was only perhaps three miles into the woods and was in no way concerned about the weather, but I was in a small clearing where the snow was now landing directly on me, so I decided to move into a more favorable location, putting me in a somewhat sheltered position. The forest here is very dense, with a considerable amount of deadfall everywhere, causing one to be very careful where you step in the snow, not being able to see what's buried beneath it. So I was slowly making my way into the area where there was a more overhead cover to protect me while I sat. I have to say at this point that unlike many of the other accounts which I have heard, I did not have any sense of being watched or feeling any fear or dread. Yeah, it was quiet, so much so that I could hear the snow hissing as it hit the ground. But other than that, nothing to me seemed out of the ordinary. I felt very much at ease and peaceful, but that was about to change. I don't think that I had walked 200 feet when a red stain in the snow caught my eye just ahead of me and to my right. In the snow, it appeared just as a cherry snow cone would that you may buy at a carnival, pure white snow stained red, about four feet in diameter. It was blood. Understand me, please. There was deadfall everywhere and thousands of small scrubby brush trees and undergrowth, as well as tall trees with this pure white snow covering the forest floor. I realized that something had been killed here and began to scan the area for a carcass and or a predator. As my eyes moved to the left, I had now taken my rifle from my shoulder and was holding it at the ready in front of me.
When I saw the carcass of what appeared to be the remains of a deer splayed or draped over a low branch belonging to a small tree, the entire skeleton was visible, which was still bloodied. This hadn't been hanging on this branch for long, I can assure you of that. The branch was only maybe 20 feet away from me. As I now was slowly scanning the area, trying to look through and around every brush and tree in the vicinity, having now done so, my eyes were drawn back to this carcass maybe ten feet away. Just to the right of where this carcass hung was a cluster of three trees, and two narrower ones, maybe a foot and a half thick, and one larger, with a diameter of, say, three feet. For whatever reason... I didn't notice this earlier, that the bottom segment of the thicker tree became narrower at the end, ten feet from the ground. And that's when I saw movement. At the ten foot mark, I saw a swift, which caused me to concentrate more carefully. Now realizing this was a beast of mammoth proportions, leaning quite still flush against the side of this tree. When I saw a black eye blink, it was covered from head to toe in dark, shaggy fur, sprinkled with snow, its face almost indiscernible from the rest of its body. If I hadn't seen the head twitch an inch followed by a blink of an eye, I wouldn't have noticed it at all, realizing I was now standing up close and personal with an enormous Sasquatch. I slowly started to backtrack as though I had seen nothing. I was now 40 feet away, and this creature hadn't moved from that tree when my eyes caught a glimpse of something gray through an opening close to the ground in the branches of that bush. What I saw was gray like squirrel's fur, and somewhat cone-shaped. It then turned ever so slightly to its right, as I now realized I was looking at the back of a head of yet another Sasquatch squatting on the ground. It had short, light gray fur, unlike the other, being long and dark. My heart beated. Continuing to move, stepping ever so, ever so slowly, yet another small deer became visible lying on the ground in front of this gray Sasquatch. It also being dead but not torn apart, I spent no additional time looking as I now increased my stride to get as far away as possible without seeming hurried in the process. Soon I was a couple of hundred feet away, and as I turned to look as best as I could see, neither of them had moved. They were in complete stealth mode. In that moment, part of me wanted to squeeze the trigger on that first one, and I don't know quite why I didn't do it. It wouldn't have been for the sake of just killing it, but rather to save my own self from an impending doom, but it's a good thing I didn't. The other one would have jumped me, if not both. Tore me limb from limb, I have to say, they simply stayed where they were perfectly still. As I had entered the area, not willing to give up their prey, apparently waiting to see what would fall out with my actions. When I was well away from them, my heart began to suddenly race again. I began to tremble violently, whether or not this was some type of delayed reaction to the abject fear I had felt, I can't say, but... I was freaking out. It was about three o'clock and I was out of the woods and turned back to look over the forest from where I'd come. I was amazed at how calm I was able to react the moment I saw the first. Had I reacted different, who knows what might have happened. The one leaning on the tree had to have been a thousand pounds with the one crouched down perhaps half of that or better. The two of them looked entirely different. Short hair, long hair, gray, brown, one large, one small, having killed two fawns, gathered together to eat. I will never enter any forest the same way again, knowing now what I know exists. They obviously 
could have taken me and perhaps they would have if I hadn't already scored these fawns. I guess I should have considered myself more than a little lucky. I have to say that I've learned a little something that day. At least that's the way I feel. These two beasts had chosen the same area I had to hunt. There was nothing about that spot that said this is a camp for lack of a better word. It also reminded me that there are no rules to their style of hunting. Smaller is better and easier as far as prey, which told me they are opportunistic. If not downright smart, every predator will go for the smallest, weakest, slowest animal they can find. They are not proud. It's all about an easy meal. Since these two Sasquatch were together, with one kill being all but eaten, and the other still whole side. I believe that they were hunting as a team and sharing the spoils. I also consider myself damn lucky. What I saw of the remaining meat on the bones was hours old, not days. They had eaten what they had caught in the early morning and had already taken advantage of another based on the size of the one that was standing. I would have to say that it could have easily eaten a fawn in a day. And it was that big. And I know what I saw, and that's the end of that whole matter. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that middle of the night slash early morning bonus upload. Guys, I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes this channel continue to grow and go, and honestly, what makes it special a place where people want to share their theories, ideas, and experiences without ridicule, without judgment, treated with respect. That is because of you, the community you've created in the comment section, and it is appreciated. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.